Did you know that so many planets from LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga use the same maps from EA's Battlefront reboots? Some areas barely change, while other times the layouts are edited but still share the same hyper-realistic textures. Plus, lighting for some areas in both games mimic each other like on Yavin 4's Great Temple becoming really bright at the entrance. And even the DLC exclusive maps like Agent Class also look very similar which probably means the LEGO team had access to the development files of Battlefront 2. Since when another YouTuber asked about these similarities, one dev subtly confirmed it by replying with this gif. This could mean that Mustafa, the next Heroes vs Villains map coming to Battlefront 2 before its live service cancellation, might have gotten its unfinished textures and map files repurposed into LEGO Star Wars. And looking at the map again, it's definitely small enough to be a HVV map. Kinda crazy to think this might apply to other maps that were being developed for Battlefront 2 as well, but I guess we'll never really know. The Complete Saga also has a lot of references to cut content from Episode 3. In fact, all Phase 2 Clone Trooper designs weren't seen in the films. The closed helmet version of the clone pilot, which was shown off in the micro series, were originally intended to be for the V-Wings. While these, from Episode 3, were the Arc 170 pilots, but ultimately never made it in the films. The Swamp Trooper uses the original design of the 212th before it got switched to orange, while the Walker Trooper wears the earlier design of the 91st. Recon Call. There's even the unreleased blue version intended for the regular troopers in this battalion on the game's cover art. Plus, the complete saga came out two years after episode 3, but for some reason the devs decided to name this model Commander Cody even though it doesn't have any orange. In fact, this was the original pattern for Commander Bly, but just with a different color. As seen in the 2005 Turbo Tank set that included the same minifigure, Bly's earlier models either became the standard 327 Trooper, or was just named Clone Commander, which is the case for many toys representing these unused designs. The Sand Speeder might seem useless in the complete saga, but it's actually a part of a hidden mission in the Masaizi level where you have to drive it past the first main gate and bring it to the Speeder dealership. After taking the car for a wash, dropping it off in the parking lot will cause a cutscene to activate where a Jawa buys it off you for a few studs. This doesn't have any real purpose since no midi kit or red brick is rewarded, meaning it's just an off-screen continuity reference to when Ben Kenobi said they had to sell the Speeder to pay Han Solo. You'll have to sell your speeder. And since it was never shown, I guess you do it here. But this isn't the only time LEGO's done this. In the Skywalker Saga, there's a side mission on Kanto Bight where Mama the Hutt sends you on a bounty hunt to capture Slice Noodles, the ex-girlfriend of Zero the Hutt from the Clone Wars series and is the singer in Jabba's Palace. Because Sly betrayed and killed Zero the Hutt at the end of the Clone Wars arc, the Skywalker Saga has the player search for her on the streets of Coruscant as she auditions for some local bars after the events of Episode 6. She does try to escape but after bringing her back to Mama the Hutt, Sly becomes a slave performer as revenge for killing her son. I don't think this is technically canon, but still a cool side quest. Some story missions even reference deleted scenes from the films. In the complete saga, Obi-Wan and Yoda see hooded figures at the Jedi Temple, which turned out to be clones dressed up as Jedi. This was intended to be right as they infiltrated the temple, but was later changed to them already fighting off some 501st troopers in the final cut, leaving this as only Legends canon. Kinda glad this was taken out since it's a real goofy idea for clones to think it'll actually fool anyone when they all look and sound the exact same. It also meant that we never got to see the 501st Trooper as a playable character in the game outside of the create a character menu, which doesn't use the correct markings because it wasn't released as a minifigure so they just had to make this up. Overall, a missed opportunity to include both characters. Plus, later in the same mission you see a holocron of Anakin killing Shark T. Although he was versing other Jedi in the final cut, the complete saga is referring to this deleted scene where Anakin walks in and zaps her mid-meditation as Order 66 is literally happening right outside the door. Funny enough, this character has around two other deaths, one from General Grievous in another deleted scene, and when she gets eaten by a Sarlacc in The Force Unleashed. But in Yoda's vision of Order 66 in The Clone Wars, she was killed by Anakin, so it is the most likely canon version. 
Some characters need the player to collect all mini kits in a level to be unlocked, and by doing that on the Defenders of Peace mission in LEGO Star Wars 3, you'll unlock the fan favorite Star Killer from the Force Unleashed game series. This is probably the coolest addition to the roster since it's the only LEGO game he was ever playable in to my knowledge. Especially back then since people used to compare him to Ahsoka because they both share similar lightsaber fighting styles. The closest we've ever gotten to this character returning is Luke's Star Killer in the Skywalker saga that looks very different to the Force Unleashed version, since it's based off early concept designs from Episode 4 done by Ralph McQuarrie, rocking the yellow lightsaber and scuba gear. A lot of character models change throughout the LEGO games as their toy minifigures get updated, but you probably didn't notice that Jango Fett's jumpsuit is a violety purple in the complete saga, but changes to blue for all his other LEGO appearances. In fact, multiple games also depict this character with either color, and even toys that come from the same production line contradict each other. So, which is it? Well, for the most part, Jango wears blue on Kamino and a purple suit on Geonosis, but even then, some behind the scenes footage shows otherwise, meaning there was a few different suits made and probably changed every few takes. So although both minifigures are technically correct with the new Django having more detail, the old one's violet color helps it stand out from the rest of the characters. While the Skywalker Saga has a progression system with unique upgrades to different types of characters, the Complete Saga and LS3 had red brick power-ups that could be turned on and off or found around the map. One of the coolest being the Dark Side upgrade where it turns all Light Side Hero Sabers red, allowing the player to use a Dark Side Anakin or Luke Skywalker. And since Luke's Force ability already matched his father with Force Choke, it only makes this power-up even funner. Sadly, red lightsabers for Jedi in the Skywalker Saga only appear as a small easter egg with Anakin when you stay idle for too long. A nice foreshadowing of his character, but since he gets a Sith Eye variant, it would have been a cool option. The complete saga also has a super saber power-up that turns everyone's lightsaber purple and makes it a lot stronger, which is also pretty cool since Mace Windu is the only character that uses one in the game. Phase 2 clone troopers have mostly been portrayed as villains in the LEGO Star Wars games. By the fourth mission in the complete saga, which is only the second time they appear, you're already trying to escape Kashyyyk during Order 66. While both droids and clones work together to stop the Jedi. Back then, the inhibitor chip retcon wasn't introduced yet, and the movies never showed the droids being deactivated, so it made a little more sense. But this also happens in the Skywalker saga since they mimic the original's Kashyyyk mission by having both sides fight against the Jedi. And after returning to Coruscant, every guard will fire on sight, which is why in free play there's phase 1 guards on the map since the game considers phase 2 clones as villains. Meaning, if you join a space battle as a 501st trooper, for example, you'll still be shooting other clones and Jedi Starfighters, all the while increasing the points bar for the CIS. Plus, doing this will lead to a siege of a Republic Venator where you even have to verse Fire First Troopers which makes no sense, especially since they're labelled as heroes on the character menu. Funny enough, the only Phase 2 clone that's considered a hero, not including Phase 1 or Commanders, are the Kashyyyk Scout Troopers that are technically classified as villains, since they're a secondary skin for the Imperial Scout Troopers. Now, this could be a coding bug, but still kind of weird. The last character you unlock in the complete saga is R2Q5. Now, this isn't the Separatist R3S6 from the Clone Wars TV show, it's actually from a deleted scene of Episode 6 where you can briefly see it in a hallway with Vader. To unlock this character, you have to complete all story missions in the game. And since then, it's appeared in multiple LEGO games and still looks just as cool. R2Q5 can also be found on the Death Star 2 map in Battlefront 2, just one of many other hidden details scattered around the series. Find out more in this playlist here.